Okay, we are live. Uh, this is Kofo Presents, and uh, we are doing a script reading with all these wonderful talents today, these great actors. Uh, the script we are reading is The Enigma in a Killing Floor Oasis. Oh, uh, yay! I almost forgot the own, my title to my, my own script. Great. Good job, Dan. Jeez. You did it, though. You did it. Yeah, team effort. All right. Um, so uh, just to, just to in, go around, introduce uh, yourselves. Oh, we lost Enigma. Hopefully, he'll be back shortly. Uh, unfortunately, Wi-Fi, what a great, uh, great uh, little tool when it works. So here he comes. He's coming back in. Ish, maybe. There we go. All right. There's Enigma. Hey, Enigma, while we got you, uh, introduce yourself in your, your freeze frame. Oh. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm the uh, freeze frame character, and uh, every time the screen freezes, you know, that's me probably there uh, doing something. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, the internet world just hasn't caught up to our amazingness yet, but it's working on it. Um, me, I, however, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, spent most of my childhood uh, in the back of the seat of a car going back and forth to private lessons, living on comic books and casseroles. Uh, you know, uh, just, you know, private lessons, you know, piano lessons, flute lessons, singing lessons, dancing lessons for an appreciation of the arts. And uh, I went to school exchanging dreams of boundless grandeur for realities of very little worth, Mary Shelley. And then uh, I discovered Sideshow. And here is real magic because when everyone believes one thing, the truth appears as magic. So you got that going for you. And um yeah i uh uh you know this became my art uh my craft my art form whatever and oh, i thought he'd never shut up all right sorry about that guys oh and we lost enigma too darn it all right well uh bobby why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself you've got uh, quite the background I have these tips um i there he is I know Enigma uh, has more to say. Yeah, luckily I have these yeah, this program that tell you that uh, good lighting makes you look great. So anyway, uh, but yeah, so uh, then, you know, I left uh, for tour and uh, just, you know, been traveling around, uh, getting tattooed by over 250 artists who work from South Africa to Switzerland, all wanting a piece of the action. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, swallowing swords and eating fire and pounding spikes in my skull. You know, it's just, it's, it's a living. And nice. uh, now, I'm now I'm tattooing it. Uh, in Sydney, Nebraska, middle of nowhere. But, uh, you know, it's like a retirement home. But uh, retirement came early because of COVID. And all the shows canceled. Anyway, go on. Next. Is that good <laughs> all right, Bobby. What? I don't know. On to you, sir. Um, I've been in the entertainment industry a long time. I still had color in my mustache when I started doing this. <laughs> I, I was a radio DJ for a while, a professional wrestler for a while. I got into acting about 25 years ago and uh, been doing it ever since. I just produced my first movie and um, it was awful. Not the movie, but the production. Um, I'll never I'll, I'll never take that much of a hand in a movie again. But uh, I've done all kinds of stuff, but I definitely um, include in the top 10 list of things I've done is hanging out with Enigma and doing this shop movie because it was the, the improv scene that we did together was off the chain. Nice. Absolutely off the chain. Nice. Oh, uh, hey, uh, uh, oh, Samantha just walked up. Tori, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? No, oh, I don't know what to tell. Uh, my name is Tori. I am a Denver native. Uh, I absolutely adore horror films. I am excited to be a part of this. And yeah, here we go. <laughs> I, have a, I have a theater background, uh, 18 years in theater, 18 plus. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Alan, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I am Alan. I have been uh, involved with acting since childhood and also music and I write music and perform it and have been in bands. <laughs> I also had to do education and Daniel Crozier and I met soon after I moved here and have done projects together. And I'm also a ventriloquist 
one of our new schools. I'm really good at it now. I loved you in Edward Scissorhands. You were amazing. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm finished. Uh, Samantha, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, I'm Canadian, but there's more to tell. Um, <laughs> That's all you got to say. When I was 13, I was bagging at Pathmark in the East Coast, and I saw a sign to audition uh, for a movie. And I didn't. And I went on to be a musician and do other things in my life. And uh, a couple years ago, I decided to finally have the nerve, you know, after performing on stage so much as a musician, to um, start acting. And here I am. Nice, nice, excellent, cool. Well, thanks, guys, for uh, you know being so generous with your time and and uh, lending your talents to this. Uh, just real quick, uh, the script we're reading uh, is um, written by me with Enigma and uh, an old partner of mine, uh, Dane Bernhardt, uh, and it's based off of uh, a comic book that I did with uh, Carl Christian uh, Crumfold. It's called Show Devils. Um, Show Devils number one, to be uh, more specific. But, uh, you know, we, how we did the comic book like 10 years, wrote a version of this in 2012, I think, and been kind of changing it around so this is the most recent version and uh yeah oh uh um, based on a true story yeah probably just kind of like texas chainsaw massacre <laughs> it, it, I was there. It, it, it picks and, and it picks and pulls from all the best parts of real life you know and sausage making <laughs> you know that's a good combination i like that that would be the elevator pitch you right, know, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre meets sausage making. Yeah, yeah, with a little bit more sausage. Yeah, uh, and it's got condiments too. All what right. Some sausage, sorry. Hey, Enigma. All right. Two Enigmas. Yeah, uh, Enigmas. I, you know, I keep getting these pro tips that don't mean anything so i don't know i maybe i need to move somewhere else like um denver <laughs> yeah man it's crystal clear here yeah yeah it'd be it'd be easier we we've always we've got an extra yeah, bedroom I buddy i should have come out there yeah i should have came out there i i was debating it and then i was like well if i don't have to then i won't but this isn't you know a lot of fun doing the, the tag in all the time but you know at least right. we know that this program is really good unlike zoom i get what you said uh zoom call cancels us too all right well oh, all We're right gonna, technology hasn't come up to our greatness yet That's all right you know. it never will <laughs> I, I don't know even uh great speakers still have trouble with these things i think all right, ready to get going, guys? Let's have some fun. Everybody got their whiskey or coffee? I think this guy's Coke. All right. Here we go. It's the imported stuff. In a dark room, Heath Ratcliffe, an assistant to the mysterious Mr. Osgon, stands holding the receiver of an old rotary phone. The spiraling cord dangles anxiously upward and out of view. That is correct, Mr. Enigma. $25,000 for your sideshow performance in the presence of one Mr. Osgon. Splendid. I will let the master know you are coming. Mr. Osgon will be most thrilled. Ciao. Heath hangs up the phone and turns. Ah, Heath hangs up the phone and turns from darkness, uh, from the darkness, displaying an emotionless face. Heath's feet carry him down a large, ha uh, large hallway that features menacing uh, decorum, unnatural skins, all in strange compositions. Sorry. You gotta, you gotta keep adding enigma. So hey, you know what? What do I? I mean, it's an Apple iPhone. Uh, uh, okay, stop doing that. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
A knock is given from outside a large door. There is a pause. The door opens, unveiling the studio with a mild squeak. Heath enters and comes to attention. Master. Yes. Ah, jeez. Sorry. With his back to Heath, Mr. Osgon is a silhouetted figure with a clear plastic bag over his head, dressed as if he was at a slaughterhouse with an additional apron in front. Before him is a large canvas with what looks like red paint on it and where the studio light is focused. He is painting. Off to the side, it seems to be a heart hooked to electrodes and connected to a large artery, pumping fresh material, blood being used as paint. Mr. Osgon dips his brush in a blood reservoir and applies it to the canvas. On the other side of the studio are works in progress, stretched skins assembled, flesh from various mismatched sources. One or two samples even have puzzle pieces carved into them. The darkened studio echoes Francis Bacon's studio. Master, the enigma is booked. Mr. Osgon slightly, turns slightly in excitement, responding to, uh, responding with interrupted breathing. Excellent, Mr. Puzzle Man. Come on. Heath interjects. He is bringing his partner. Mr. Osgood goes back to painting. And he is bringing me a doll to play with. Fine, prepare the site. Yes, sir. That's it. Heath closes the door as he exits. In the heat, in the heat of the day, a van, a second. In the heat of the day, a van in the distance kicks up dust on a dirt road. Dust and dirt expunges up in the air, unveiling the stenciled name, the Enigma and Friends, along with the small variety of sponsors. Olga's Crab Meat, 100% real imitation crab. There is bio uh, coffins. Here today, gone sometime soon. And uh, more on the side of the van. The van then drives off frame as additional credits are needed. The van, uh, we got more of the van, 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 van. Okay. From the interior of the van on the dashboard, two pieces of toast sit in aluminum foil, cooking as butter melts from the heat of the sun shooting through the windshield. From the darkness inside the van, silhouette hands with hints of blue grip the steering wheel. One hand reaches from the toast of the reaches for the toast on the dashboard. Enigma turns into frame to acknowledge someone out of view wearing dark goggles as shades, revealing his highlights of his heavy patterned tattooed head and announces Enigma. Uh, oh, and Enigma just kicked off. Oh no. Susan. Susan. Oh no. Okay. Hold on, everybody out there in Radio Land. He's um, trying to reconnect. Yep. <laughs> All right, he's um, having a hard time. Soupson. Come on, dude. <laughs> All right. All right, we're at Soupson. No, okay. Uh, I went outside to try and make this better, but okay. Um, you know, we're at the line. Soup's on, buddy. Yeah, soup's on. I did I not <laughs> mention that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. His stage partner, Darla Demise, er, emerges from the back of the van and takes the passenger seat next to Enigma. He reaches for a piece of toast on the dashboard as Enigma continues driving. 
Soup, huh? I thought we were having road toast. Enigma responds while watching the road. Dashboard toast. Road toast has asphalt in abundance. Ugh. Road toast is unmanageable for my digestive tract. Indeedy, nor mine. Enigma turns to Darla Demise as she bites into crunchy dashboard toast. Crumbs break off making a mess. Uh, can you pull out the map again? The map? Yeah, yeah, the one I told you to pack in the glove compartment. Darla pops up in the glove compartment. It is filled with nothing but snacks and wrappers. I don't, I don't recall one. Why would we need a physical map anyway? We'll have Google Maps. Uh, yeah, Google Maps uh, <laughs> probably work as good as this program we're on. Um, <laughs> I mean, Google Maps, really? Tell me, it's on your smartphone. Yeah, yours perhaps. My, my phone isn't that smart. Darla looks down at Enigma's phone, sitting next to her smartphone. It is an ancient flip phone. Darla grabs her smartphone and clips it out. The screen lights up and goes dead. No, my phone is DOA. Your phone needs a defibrillator. Where's my charger? Uh, check your purse. No, no. Damn it. I usually pack it in the kitty's thermos. <sighs> Lissai. Yeah, we can pick up another charger later. The map? Darla smiles and motions as she doesn't know. Enigma slams on the brakes in annoyance. The van comes to a screeching halt. Enigma and Darla get slung around in their seatbelts. Darla, a map is the basic form for navigation. It can be used in concert with a compass. Enigma taps on the small dashboard mounted compass. Without the map, how do you expect to find the fruit bowl that is our final destination on this perilous journey? Well, there's my phone. Which is deceased. We discussed this already. Uh, find a gas station, <laughs> buy a charger, power up, back on route. And where's the nearest gas station? Look ahead, hot shot. Darla points through the windshield at something in the distance. Zooming in to a set of signs stating that gas tacos and oddities five miles to the left, while Highway 93 to the right, the signs are noticeably misspelled. Enigma squints his eyes under the goggles as Darla continues to point. Mm, Okie dokie, we go west. We go left. Yeah, yeah, left is west. Right. <laughs> The van sets off west, kicking more dust from the dirt road to seek out gas tacos and oddities. Wipe to the van pulls up to a single pump at a dusty, tattered gas station. The sign there is also misspelled, displaying gas tacos and oddities. In the distance awaits a ping pong table. What looks like a woman body wrapped from head to toe, sitting in a once nice evening gown with wraparound shades and a summer hat under a large garden umbrella. Enigma and Darla step out of the van, closing the doors behind them. Enigma walks to the pump, places the nozzle in the gas tank, and flips the pump while Darla walks over to the wrapped woman and offers a polite handshake. Hello, how are you? I'm Darla. Darla D. Mize. No response, no handshake. Instead, the woman reaches for her purse under her chair. She opens the purse and pulls out a ping pong paddle. Enigma looks over as the wrapped woman stands up with her paddle. Darla is equally perplexed as the woman doesn't seem to be responding to them directly. The wrapped woman continues disregarding Enigma and Darla as she walks off toward the distant ping pong table. Darla turns to Enigma. Ping pong? Wrapped up like this in this heat? 
Yeah, leave her be. Let's head in and pay for gas and get a map. See what the oddities might be about. Darla nods. Enigma and Darla walk, begin walking towards the gas station. The wrapped woman makes it to the ping pong table in the distant heat. As Darla and Enigma make it to the front steps, the gas station tenant is seen in the dirty window, finishing pinning up a dress on a mannequin. Old, canned, and miscellaneous gas station treats adorn the shelves as they enter. There is one refrigeration unit in the back corner with soda, beer, and other drinks. Near the cash register and comic book rack, a worn cowboy cowhand Jane stands almost as if he had come in from finishing up chores on the ranch, sweat drenched, wearing his hat and shit kicker boots while adjusting a seam on a new dress he is working on draped over the mannequin. The cowboy doesn't look up right away as Enigma and, and, and Darla enter. Howdy, you world travelers. Thanks for uh, stopping in and purchasing the petrol. Cowhand Jane glances up at Enigma and Darla. Suddenly, his interest is arrested. Enigma, in turn, notices running mascara around the cowboy's eyes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at you. Calhoun Jane is delighted by their presence and shuffles over toward Enigma and Darla. All three are wearing welcoming smiles. Afternoon, Rough Rider. Oh, Rough Riddlin, miss. You look as if you're some kind of death rock band. Nick Dennis and Jane. The folks down the East Park call me Calhoun Jane. Calhoun Jane extends uh, his hand. Enigma it's a meets pleasure, good sir. I am the Enigma. Oh, I'm sorry. I am the Darla Demise. Darla shakes his hand like a southern belle and follows up with a curtsy. Enigma pulls off his dark goggles. Cowhand Jane gasps and takes in Enigma's tattooed eyes. Sweet Terry, look at those eyes. Enigma smiles wider, revealing some blackness to the inside of his mouth. <laughs> Enigma nods and moves yeah, in to try that, and show yeah. Cat Hand Jane the hidden mouth. Yeah. Don't know if you can see Jane, but there are modified pouches in my chipmunk cheeks. What Cat use can that be? Oh, all sorts. Great place for the house keys. <laughs> Cow Hand Jane is amused, and then he realizes. He has seen Enigma before. Wait, I've seen you before on six television shows. It's, you know, like the Axe Files. Right. And open up for nine inch nails. Correct. Well, jump and I'll crack your ass. Yepers. I got honest. To Buddhist eye shows labs. Would you mind if I give you a photo? Nigma nods. Darla looks looks out the window to see the uh, the bandaged woman preparing for a ping pong match. Hey, what's her story? Oh, him? Oh, <laughs> the bull? Yep, fabulous mod. He asked me. And where's bandages for attention? World class ping pong player. Huh. The plains people challenge small from time to time. Small farm mechanic, dress and all. Grease monkey performance artist. How's that shot? A camera on a tripod is set up with a timer. Enigma and Darla pose with Cowhand Jane wide-eyed and wearing a huge smile several seconds pass darla is still holding her pose comments how long did you set the timer for cow and jane responds don't know you second enigma makes an observation while still holding his monster pose shouldn't the red light be on oh yeah 
the camera suddenly starts flashing a red light. Enigma, Darla, and Cowhand Jane relax back into their pose. One, two, three. Still no flash. Cowhand Jane becomes impatient and marches toward the camera. Flash. A snapshot is taken where Cowhand Jane... Uh, Cowhand Jane's hand comes into frame, blocking the Enigma and Darla in the background. This is followed by a few snapshot mishaps as Cowhand Jane cannot figure out his own camera. Cowhand Jane walks, uh, snapshot of Cowhand Jane walking back, returning uh, toward Enigma and Darla. Cowhand Jane takes a sniff of his armpit as Enigma and Darla react. Finally, a decent snapshot of all three, well posed. Bang! There's an explosion outside! What the shit? Darla runs to the window. Maud is playing ping pong against a lean plains person with firecrackers. Another firecracker is lit and set into play. Yeah! Let's keep lively. Enigma is looking out the window with Darla and Cowhand Jane. They flinch every time there is an explosion. Just a second. We're trying to reconnect with Enigma now. All right. Jane, do you have a map? Enigma? Oh, yeah. Jane, do you have a map? Oh, sure. Where are you going? We have a gig with Mr. Osgon. As Darla mentions this, and Cal and Jane's smile softens as he turns away from the excitement outside. Well, let's get you that map. Oh, and a phone charger. <laughs> Cal and Jane looks back at Darla as he walks up to pick up a map. Hey, this ain't the future. No doubt it's here. Uh, okay. We live in the past here. It's not even the present. Sorry. <laughs> Cowhand Jane brings up a map to the front counter. Enigma falls behind, waiting to study the map and get back, get back on the road, Cowhand Jane opens up the map. Enigma and Cowhand Jane stand over it, beginning their survey. Cowhand Jane points out their current location. We're here. <coughs> Enigma? Oh, Shimmy Shake Valley. <laughs> Here's the path we need to cut through. Seam County Road 7. It winds a bit through the valley, about 20 miles. Enigma pays for the gas and cash. Darla brings up a pile of snacks and drinks to the, to the counter. Here's for the gas. How much for the map and snacks? Enigma grabs the map and Cowhan Jane bags the snacks. On the house. Enigma is grateful. Um, most um, appreciated? Oh, yeah, most appreciated, good sir. Thanks, Jane. Donata. Your company and snapshots need to be for the whole upward trans this day. Enigma and Darla begin to make their way to the door. Cowhand Jane moves out of the out from behind the counter. Bye, Jane. Take care. Hopefully we'll be back through after we're done with our show. Cow and Jane smiles. I look forward to it, Miss Demies. Cheers. Darla exits the station with Enigma falling at the distance. Take care. Before Enigma reaches the door, Cowhead Jane grabs Enigma's oh, yeah. arm. Enigma, sir. 
What is it, Jane? A gas Challenge station is a a gas Good. station is a vortex. A place where you come to refuel and consider if you're gonna continue on where you're going or find a new route or return from where you came. I'd like you to take a moment to consider this. Enigma. Uh, think, yeah. <laughs> Enigma takes a moment to consider what Jane is saying. Enigma looks down at his shadow as it moves forward before him. Not fully grasping what lies before them, Enigma and Darla need money. That is the situation that hasn't changed, and it is a large payday. Thanks for the moment. Cal and Jane smiles. Take care on your travels, then. Enigma waves at Cowhand Jane as he exits the facility. Enigma walks from the gas station all the way back to the van. All the way back to the van. Mog continues playing ping pong with the planes person. As the firecrackers blow up, Cowhand Jane is seen through the window waving, then moves back to his mannequin to work on the dress. Darla finishes pumping the gas into the van and places the nozzle back on the pump as Enigma comes up. What did Jane have to say? He had me take a moment. Huh. Are you constipated? Well, are you constipated? <laughs> Not a movement, a moment. Just something for me to ponder now. Get in the van. Well, now I am intrigued. I want to hear all about your movement. Dust erupts as the van drives off. Cowhand Jane looks out the window through an open screen as the van leaves in the dust cloud. Hmm. I hope those kids survive the night. That's not my rifle. Mom! The late afternoon sun bakes over the dirt road where the van continues along the horizon. Cowhand Jane was really sweet. But I didn't see any O D D I T Y S. The oddities were fabulous. Mod and Cowhead Jane were oh, weren't the that odd. Were fabulous Mod and Cowhead Jane. But they weren't that odd. That's their idea of performance art. Being a transvestite uh, cowboy and a sure. bandaged housewife playing explosive ping pong. Being gas station attendants was the performance. Oh. Yeah, the rest of it is who they actually are. The van comes down a dirt road and gives pause begrudgingly. The engine starts to cut out and then the headlights begin to flicker, then go dead. Inside the van, Enigma and Darla start to move about with concern. Enigma can be heard trying to get the van started again. The engine won't turn over. Darla steps out, grabbing her still dead phone in a panic. Enigma steps out a couple of beats after Darla slamming the door in annoyance. Damn it. We were just at a gas station. You should have had Maude or Jane check the van. Enigma pulls out his phone. It has power. The screen glows, illuminating his tattooed face. I have power. No bars. Damn it. That's not a welcome phone feature. Darla turns her attention back to the van and makes her demands. Well, fix it. Heal the van. I'm not a mechanic. You're, you're a guy. It's in your DNA, okay? You can, you can fix it. Make no response in kind. 
Grease Monkey does not instantly ejaculate from my pores, Darla. That's not the only thing that doesn't ejaculate. Enigma takes offense. What does that mean? Darla notices something in the distance over Enigma's shoulder. Hey, look, slow down with the fending off the hard on. What's that? Enigma turns over his shoulder. That? Wasn't there a moment ago, right? Half a mile off in the night sky looms a dark structure framed with a single light. Enigma peers into the night and finally replies. See, Darla is off to the back of the van. She opens the door and hops up into it. Enigma begins walking over to the back of the van to see what she is up to. Darla? Darla hops out of the van, flashlight and map in hand. I'll bet you that's where we need to be. We're close, I guess. Then let's confirm it, Enigma. Darla hurries to the hood of the van. She turns to the flashlight and begins messily unfolding the map. There, the map makes a loud tearing sound. Darla pauses wide-eyed, teeth clenched. Enigma reaches, concer reacts concerned. Darla, stop. Oh. Enigma, did we lose you again? Darla, stop. Take a moment. Darla pauses, takes a breath. She places the flashlight in her mouth. She exaggerates the careful movements to unfold the map. Enigma sighs, then reacts for the flashlight, reaches for the flashlight. Here. Let go of the flashlight. Let go, let go. Hmm. Yeah. And this has to be the place. Saliva marks the spot. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, guys. Uh, you, no, you're not. Let's see here. What we're walking? <laughs> yeah. Looks like I lost my my spot. <laughs> yep. Get your stuff. I'll get the cart. <laughs> oh man. Okay. We'll need to bring all the performance gear. Righto, Captain. Oh. Wait, no, Darla. What? We need to take only what we absolutely need. I need costumes. Sure, but. Uh, uh, good then, it's settled. Uh, we need all our props, the banner, merch. Fine, at least I'll have options. Enigma and Darla venture along the dirt road by foot, leaving their dead van in the distance. Enigma pulls the cart with a ratchet strap tied through the handle and body of the cart for a better center of gravity. The other end is bound to his torso. The cart is tied down, holding Darla's various costumes, boxes of props, and bags of even more props. The chainsaw and pitchfork are more evident amongst these spoils. Darla is keeping in stride with her full backpack, She's listening to an iPod, playing Joy Division, and singing along as Enigma continues labor. Darla pays little attention to him as he grumbles. Love will tear us apart. Yeah, there's no stuff like that is what makes for good branding. She needs to learn this stuff. Why do I always get stuck with the heave-ho? Enigma pauses to catch a breath. Darla continues on. In the darkening sky before them, the light seems closer. Oh, come on now. <laughs> oh, my God. 
Way two, dusk before a dark structure. Enigma and Darla are far upon an open muddy field. Before them is back the sprawling old wooden stage light structure, structure with a single light on as their beacon. In front of the stage is a very elegant chair in the mud. This can't be right. In the distance, a high-pitched dog yaps. Perhaps a chihuahua. Enigma and Darla look back at each other. The chihuahua yapping starts again, louder, as though we're getting closer and for three beats. Then a voice over an intercom booms. Hello, Enigma and Darla. We have been expecting you. Enigma and Darla pause, looking around in the darkness. Hello? Darla begins to step around the stage with Enigma pulling the cart. The cart wheels are caked in mud. Enigma and Darla can't, uh, aren't much better. Give it. Unbelievable. Sorry, guys. Go ahead, keep going without me. Heath. My name is Heath. It is an honor to have you here. Mr. Osgon will be most pleased to hear that you have arrived. More lights go on around the stage, and Mugma and Darla seem uneasy as the intercom voices seem to have no physical body presented to greet them. And the stage is rickety and makeshift. Hey, Thank you for having us, Heath. Our van broke down. We had to hook it up here. Oh, dear. Would you happen to have someone who could take a look at it? Certainly. We can see about sending Master Osgon's personal mechanic. He can tow it in and make a tip top in his shop. We are high in altitude with gratitude. Would you happen to have a phone charger? I will see what we have. Is that why you didn't, we didn't receive a call about your distress? Enigma and Darla continue slopping through the mud to the front of the stage. They are both covered in mud. Before them is a questionable set of stairs to the back of the stage. It is uh, uh, the back of the stage is a curtain of faint textures and patterns. Yep, pity. The curtain slides open. Heath Ratcliffe walks out onto the stage before Enigma and Darla. Heath is still speaking into the mic. Ah, the Enigma feedback. Heath reacts and lowers the mic. Ah, the enigma and Darla demise, a pleasure. Darla curtsies as enigma bows with a cart still strapped to his torso. Thank you for having us. Yes, thanks. Heath moves to help enigma and Darla with their belongings. Allow me to help with your things. Darla smiles and begins unstrapping her back, her pack, while Enigma begins to unlatch himself from the cart. Heath is swift in helping to lighten their load. Oh my. Thanks. Nope, okay. <laughs> Heath moves up the stairs carrying some of the gear. This way, please. Oh, come on. Heath motions Enigma and Darla to follow. Enigma and Darla go up the stairs, carrying the remainder of their gear. Mud squishes as they walk across the stage, following Heath. They follow Heath around the curtain. Here you can set up your gear, clean off, and rest up for your performance tonight. 
Enigma. Okay. Do we have power out here? Running water? Uh, I... Page 30. Okay. Nope, Enigma, you still there? Uh, yeah, where are we at? Page Sorry. 30 at the very top. Okay, do we have power out here, running water? Yes, indeed, on both items. Heath shows them a tub behind a shower curtain. My many dogs are barking. I shall bring the rest of your belongings in. Thanks again. Heath walks out through the curtain. Enigma motions politely for Darla to take a bath first. Ladies first. That is a first. Enigma raises his brow in response to Darla's comment. This, this is pretty weird, even for us, right? Enigma nods and is about, is about to verbally respond to Heath as Heath walks up, uh, walks back in. He is carrying the rest of their items and places down near their other effects. Darla turns to Heath. How about dinner? Dinner will be served right after your performance. Fantastic. Through an opening in the curtain, Enigma eyes the lonesome, elegant chair for a single audience member. Enigma. Mr. Osgon travels in large numbers of one. Enigma turns to Heath and Heath smiles. Thank you, good sir, all the accommodations. This will be one for the books. Mr. Osgon will be most happy to know that you have arrived intact and ready to perform. Heath nods in approval and turns back to Enigma and Darla. Now, is there anything at all that you need help with setup? Uh, well, with the van dead, we could only carry so much. So our banner and some props got left behind. Hmm, I think I can remedy that. Uh, pre show water and snacks? Oh, beer! The curtain opens, materials drop on the floor, tools drop on the floor last. You are welcome to use any tools and materials I have gathered for you. Enigma's face lights up and joy. Darla's face lights up as well. It might as well be Christmas. Enigma unrolls canvas, Darla hauls out paints, Enigma paints puzzle pieces onto canvas. There's a break in the rhythm as Heath drops off water, celery, sticks, carrots, and assorted vegetables to Darla and Enigma. Darla also receives her beer. Darla tries on one of her costumes. Enigma finishes up the banner with bright colored letters for the Enigma and friends. Darla chops off a stuffed animal's head with a katana. Enigma rubs his head as he comes up to Darla playing with, with the head of a stuffed animal. Ah, shit, where'd you find that? It was in the gear. That was from my childhood. You killed poor Biz Biz. Enigma picks up the remains of Biz Biz and walks away from Darla. Darla, with a smile on her face, doesn't look up. Well, poop. Shit. Grins. <laughs> Tail spins. Enigma is setting out all of the rest of the pieces, then begins polishing and disinfecting the sword. The new banner is hung. Darla dresses the stage with with found materials and canvas doodles on either side. 
How are you doing, Darla? Darla is wearing a heavily ruffled, shiny garment, chewing bubble gum, holding a chainsaw in hand. She starts the chainsaw and blows a bubble. This beast is ready for launch. Heath walks onto the stage and addresses Enigma and Darla. Mr. Osgon is on his way. Fantastic. We'll be ready in five minutes. Heath bows politely in acknowledgement. As he steps away, Enigma reciprocates the gesture with a nod. Heath, where do we go when we walk in? Where do you go when you walk into the darkness like that? We didn't see a building or anything around here. Oh, here's this hobbit hole. There's this hobbit hole over here. There's a hobbit hole. Oh my, Tolkien. Heath smiles as he exits the stage. Break a leg. Not to worry, someone always does. The lights pop on above the stage. In the audience, there is one single seat occupied. Mr. Osgon's pant legs and hands are hit with ambient lighting. The rest of him is in Curtain draws open. Enigma and Darla take to the stage. Mr. Osgon in the shadow join, uh, jolts alive with applause. The live show starts with the Enigma and Darla demise playing music. A trumpet and clarinet on trumpet and clarinet. Has anyone ever seen a magic show? In a magic show, you wonder, how is it done? But in sideshow, you merely wonder, why? The tattooed man's skin is a bluish mist. The ink you see is from over 250 artists. Electric girl, I'll not postpone, can light up bulbs by touch alone. The geek by us has been employed. Everything in the pit will be destroyed. Talented talker that I be. The Enigma swallows a sword as Darla stands to one side, announcing his performance. Ladies and gentlemen, the Enigma is worldwide adored because he can swallow a sword. This ancient art rests the blade on his heart. I hope he is not punctured or gored. Darla is bent over with her throat on a pitchfork. Pitchfork. Nah. And to demonstrate, we have a woman with the power over life and death, as all women have. However, she has a pitchfork in her hands, placing her neck across the top of the tines of this pitchfork. Her jugular veins pulsing with blood across the tops of the tines. As you can see, Darla is, quite, is in quite a pickle. At this point in the performance, Enigma and Darla are stripped to their underwear. Enigma, with a cowboy hat on, he runs at her with a chainsaw. Darla screams and runs away. Yee-haw! Just like back in Texas, no go diggity dee! Jump up, shake my pants, I'm from Texas. It's American Psycho meets Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Woo-hoo! Darla and Enigma perform the kiss of death with apples in each other's mouths, carving X's in the fruit with a chainsaw while blindfolded. This ends the performance. Applause erupts in the echo chamber that is the private outdoor auditorium. Coming from the sole attendee, Mr. Osgon. Bravo, bravo! Enigma pulls off the blindfold. The stage lights are blinding as Enigma looks out to get a glimpse of Miss, Mr. Osgon. Darla pulls off her blindfold. Enigma zeroes in on where the applause is coming from. Enigma takes his carved apple and blindly throws where the applause is coming from. The apple doesn't hit the ground. Safe to assume. Mr. Osgon caught the album. Oh. oh. 
Enigma and Darla pause, stunned, realizing that Mr. Osgon has left, has just left. Darla purses her lips and raises her brow to Enigma. I don't know. Enigma and Darla are cleaning up their gear, insulted by the sudden exit of their one audit, uh, audience member, Mr. Osgon. Enigma is sterilizing the katana. Darla is cleaning up the chainsaw. All I'm saying is that there's too much writing on these abstract gestures. We need to figure out what his abrupt departure meant. Are we gonna get paid? And we still have to get our vehicle fixed. He applauded, right? Out of spontaneous politeness. Yeah, but I've dealt with weird and conniving. I doubt he's up He's up there. Uh, we'll be compensated. <laughs> right. Oh, geez. Heath enters the green room in the dark and, trow and takes several seconds to walk up to Enigma and Darla. Enigma and Darla, still holding their props, peer into the darkness. Their ex excuse me, expressions become relaxed and welcoming when they realize it is Heath. Splendid. Fantastic performance. Mr. Osgon thoroughly enjoyed it. Out of the darkness and with the hands in the air in celebration, he steps under the light backstage. Oh, good. Great. I have a little memento. Heath holds in his hand a car the carved apple that Enigma threw to Mr. Osgon, encased in clear cast resin. Oh. Wow. Heath hands the resin cased apple to Enigma. That is pretty neat. How did you get the resin to cure so, oh, it's still warm. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> Dude. Damn it. Ha! Mr. Osgon is an artist. He has devised a number of recipes for quick curing resin. Great for preserving specimens. Enigma hands a resin cast, uh, resin cased apple to Darla. I'd like to hear more about what Mr. Osgon does. Best to have him articulate his creative process. Dinner will be served soon. He produces a second gift, a dress for Darla. He carefully hands it to Darla. Her eyes widen. <gasps> Darla takes the dress and unfurls it, displaying it against her frame. It is quite elegant. <laughs> she looks at Enigma wide-eyed. Wait here, I'm gonna go put this on. Darla dashes to the back of the green room in an unseen corner. That was very nice of you. It's been a while since she has had a new dress. She usually makes her own. No need to thank me. It is Mr. Osgon who has the generous heart. Enigma, damn it. Enigma turns from Heath, directing himself to Darla. Thank you, Mr. Osgon. Thank you, Mr. Osgon. Heath smiles. Mr. Osgon will be so pleased that you enjoyed it. Darla materializes from the back of the green room in the new dress with bracelets, armbands, choke collar, and a whole new hairdo and makeup. Heath and Enigma are a bit surprised at how quick she put all of that together. What? Stop gawking, boys. I'm dressed to devour. Let's eat. Enigma turns to Heath. Lead the way, my good man. Enigma and Darla follow Heath 
out through the curtain. Enig uh, Heath, Enigma and Darla pass the curtain and onto the stage. A dining room table is laid out with three settings and multiple large tablecloths resembling skins. There are three table grills with the wafts of steam coming out from under the closed lids. The table setting is lit by LEDs with the flickering of stage perimeter torchlight. Heath places the resin apple on the rotating box with an LED projecting through it, refracting through the resin that illuminates the stage. It is quite eerie. Ooh, mood lighting. Enigma adjusts something in his mouth as Darla and Enigma are A xylophone can be heard in the darkness beyond the stage. Weird background music is being played, settling the mood. Where's the music coming from? Enigma and Darla's attention is drawn to the darkness. From the darkness, a figure slowly begins to emerge. The xylophone music intensifies as the figure becomes more and more clear. It is Mr. Osgon, and he is wearing quite the mask. A conjoined goat head with a cycloptic eye and mangled, short, ho uh, mangled horns, a small sliding panel is open displaying his nostrils and mouth. Mr. Osgon steps up the stairs. My friends, allow me to introduce you to the Mr. Osgon. Heath moves to the opposite end of the dining room table as Mr. Osgon makes his way onto the stage. Enigma and Darla stand in respect. Heath pulls out Mr. Osgon's chair as he comes around to sit. Mr. Osgon, allow me to introduce our guests. The Enigma and Darla Demise, sideshow performers extraordinaire. A pleasure. Thank you, sir. It is great to meet you also. Yes, indeed. Mr. Osgon sits, and Heath scoots the chair in behind him, in place. Thank you. Please sit. You are my guests. Enigma and Darla bow and take to their seats. Heath stands next to Mr. Osgon. Uh, the stage goes quiet. Attention is paid to Mr. Osgon at the far end of the table, who takes a bite from a spoon full of with what might be raspberry sorbet. Good master. Mr. Osgon swallows the sorbet as Heath pours a glass of red wine. Heath then moves toward, uh, moves over to where Enigma and Darla are seated and fills their wine glass. Mr. Osgon takes his wine glass in hand and clangs with some with the same spoon against the glass. I would like to propose a toast. Mr. Osgon raises his glass. Enigma and Darla follow suit and raise their glasses. My esteemed and distinguished guests, I, we welcome you to my home. We thank you for performing for me. Mr. Osgon raises his glass higher. The Enigma and Darla Demise performing the age old art, working acts of sideshow, the tattooed blue marvel, and his girl wonder. The George and Gracie of the modern era were privileged to have you break bread with a toast to the ninth wonder. Everyone takes a drink at the delivery of the toast. Mm. Ninth wonder? What's the eighth? You'll have to see my studio. It's a wonder. I can find anything at all. <laughs> the room chuckles in laughter, as does Darla. Enigma falls suit. 
The ice is broken. A toast to our host. From shore to shore, his hospitality married with his creativity will be known by most. Ha! Darkness is all around the well-lit stage. Thank you for having us perform on your stage in this unique location. You are too kind. Mr. Osgon, Osgon sits down. I call the stage Oasis. Many unique events have occurred on it. Oh. We tried for our own free range music festival once. That sounds cool. It was cool. How long did that go on? We only did it once. The black metal bands made all my pregnant cows have miscarriages. Oh dear. <laughs> it was a mess. Just like my studio. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see it. Indeed. We'll wine. We'll dine. You'll collect your compensation, and I invite you to stay the evening. Rest up before your trek out into the great beyond. Sounds sweet, Mr. Osgon. Mr. Osgon gestures for the entrees. Let's feast, shall we? Something grilled bloody for me and for Darla Demise and the Enigma. A well-considered grill, vegetarian platter. Oh, you like to grill? I like to grill. Mr. Osgon nods and looks to Heath. Heath begins serving Mr. Osgon from the grills before them on the dining table. Enigma sips his drink and turns to Mr. Osgon. I have to ask about your mask uh, ceremonial. I like to think that I take found objects and remake them into something more vibrant, more dynamic. I wish to explore the integrities of the materials I'm working in and put them in a new context. So materials manipulation, uh, anything more spiritual? Heath begins serving up Enigma and Darla's vegetarian dishes from their grills. I draw on the reconciliation of my past trauma, the loss of my parents. I infuse that into the project. Whatever my canvas is, the act of creativity is the beast, <laughs> the best form of social therapy. Spiritual, only in the sense that you are a celestial entity unto yourself. With this, you can manifest your own personal destiny. Enigma seems to be intrigued in the creative discussion. Darla is more so. Holy cats. I'm thinking art night. Beer and scissors. From a profile perspective on Mr. Osgon's side of the table, and, un and unseen by Enigma and Darla, but open under the table itself, he takes the spoon in hand and scoops it in the open skull of a man. The man has a gurgling inhalation and barely alive. I'll have to give you an enigma the tour after dinner. Heath walks to the green room backstage. Dig in. Darla is famished and dives in, mm -hmm. followed by Enigma. Loud chewing, smacking sounds can be heard. Mm -hmm. Very good. Glad you enjoyed it. They continue eating. The stage goes silent, except for the clattering of silverware and munching of food. So talking about materials, liquid latex, resins. Enigma paint. takes... Enigma takes a last bite while watching Mr. Osgon. Any pain? Or... Enigma hears a soft gurgle coming from under the table. Less than you would think. Enigma realizes there is something unsettling present 
he begins to talk their way out of the situation. The meal was great, Mr. Osgon. You are most welcome. Uh, any news on our van? So quick to leave. I thought we'd stay the night. We have another gig in Arizona tomorrow. Do you? We do? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, affirmative. Okay. I'd still like to show you both my studio. We wouldn't want to put you out. Enigma, you're my guest. You're insulting me. What is wrong, Enigma? Don't be a blue dick. We have a little time. We're not going to get our 25 Gs. Dar, Mr. Enigma, in a flailing gesture, announces to the whole room, Well then, it is set. Enigma is about to get up, but becomes groggy and slips back into his chair. Let's take our esteemed guests to the studio. Darla, uh, Darla's dress sparks and ignites oh. at the shoulder. Her arm and wristbands at her waist, knees and ankles, finally at the choker. She looks at Enigma and screams. <laughs> Darla's dress is igniting and cauterizing at strategic points. Enigma collapses out of his seat. He reaches out toward her. Enigma brings down plates and glasses and as the screaming ceases. A cauterized body part fuddles into Enigma's hazed vision. There's no blood, just clean burn areas. Enigma can see where Darla's head stopped rolling. It is somewhat abstracted as though it were an object. Please collect our new doll parts. Heath moves in to start collecting Darla's cauterized body parts. Enigma produces a razor blade from his modified pouch in his mouth. It drops into his hand. He lunges at Heath, reaching down to collect the, the part near Enigma and connects. He Enigma gets, his, uh, gets him deep and blood spurts out of his hand. Heath follows around with the back hand, connecting with Enigma's head. Enigma falls hard to the floor. <laughs> Hurry up. We'll need to see to your wound. Enigma rolls, and here's Mr. Osgon. Send Greg to collect Enigma. Black. Hey. Okay, let's take a, a, a moment here. Unfortunately, oh, man. Uh, I haven't seen Enigma. <laughs> hmm. Bless you. Thank you. Uh, Shoot, let me let me tax him real quick, and then we'll we'll probably just have to move on. I'm gonna get a backup source of technology as my power is breathing. Let's see. I can take over reading um, subtext, Dan, if you want. Okay, to that sounds I'll be fun. right back. Two seconds. Okay. Two seconds. No worries. No problem. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that way you don't have to talk as much. You know? Yeah, I'm, I'm having a, a hard time with the English language. I warned you guys, but uh, I, I felt bad that uh, Enigma ended up having to drop or dropped out. Um, I, I mean, yeah, maybe uh, I know everybody's like watching us live out there. So this is intermission time, guys. But uh, I guess maybe we should probably just stick to Zoom for these and just pre-record them. You know, I... I don't have any more lines, Sam, and yeah. I know that you do coming up. I, I can I can read whatever too. So I can okay. take, take um, over when it comes to oh, you. Cool. Yeah. Sure. Um that would be awesome mm -hmm. if you take yeah. over when it comes to me. How's that sound? Cool. Oh, by the way, killer death scene. Super <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and love like I was like I was laughing my ass off. I had to like mute myself. You had a stuffed bunny with a knife. You were ready. Thank you. Good girl. Yeah. So cute. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Uh, I, I didn't hear back uh, from Enigma. He apologizes. He, he wasn't able to get back on. Uh, so, yeah, in hindsight, uh, yeah, uh, uh, he was willing to drive down here, but that's like a two, two and a half hour drive. Oh, yeah. So, so maybe next time, uh, yeah, and, and Bobby, we were just mentioning this. Maybe we just go ahead and do Zoom, pre record it, and then post it. Um, because maybe uh, you know, the live stuff might be interfering and also, yeah, probably be best, I guess, to get uh, Enigma to a, a safer location with better Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, an undisclosed safer location. Right, right, right. All right. So, uh, so Sam, uh, did you want to take over for narration? Yeah, I'll do that, and then um, Tori's okay. gonna take over for me when I start being uh, about him again. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, that sounds fine. I'll just uh, can continue with uh, Enigma's parts, and uh, so we're page at the bottom. Yeah, page fifty. So we just got thirty some more pages to go. All right. Exit night stage. When Enigma looks up, Mr. Osgon and Keith are gone. Those body parts are also absent. The area with crash plates are yeah. left. Stage is still lit. Enigma is still jerking and easy. Enigma rolls. On in the empty part of the stage where Darla's parts were last seen. Enigma whimpers and then sobs. Oh, yeah. Oh. Enigma rolls onto his back. Hands cover his face. No! No! Enigma cries out with a watery plea. Darla! No! Darla! Enigma sits up and looks off into the darkness surrounding the stage. Enigma's face is distraught and soaked in tears. In the darkness, movement, a large figure is coming forward. Enigma, drugged, tries to stand and falls. Forward as a large figure comes up the stairs carrying something large with straps. Enigma sees the blurred figure on the stage, place the large object down on the stage floor. Well, hello, lovely. The figure comes up closer to Enigma, in focus. It is Greg and clenches the blue devil in the head. Enigma collapses. <laughs> Greg goes back to the object and begins unfolding it, locking the structure in place and readying the straps. <laughs> That's a wide fist you have there, <laughs> sunshine. Greg does not reply. He focuses on his task. Enigma is in pain. The drug feeling isn't going away. He fears that he might be stuck on the stage in the middle of nowhere. Enigma looks down. He still has his razor blade in hand, but it has clearly cut his hand too. Enigma hears the last lock snap. He looks up. Greg is on Enigma. He grabs Enigma and picks him up. Enigma tries to fight by swinging the razor blade. Greg swats it from his hand. Enigma can only watch the razor blade fall from his blurry vision onto the floor. Greg is carrying the squirming Enigma to the rack that is now stand upright for display. No, no, don't! But lovely, you'll enjoy this. Keep your curious self. Enigma continues to squirm. He's in a drugged, unfocused panic. Fight or flight. Fight or flight. Grek throws Enigma up against the rack. <laughs> Grek punches Enigma in the head again. <sighs> this makes Enigma more dazed, but still in dull pain, easier to manhandle. Count stars, my lovely. Such handsomeness should sleep. Greg starts to latch Enigma into the rack. Each limb gets strapped down, even his torso and his neck. Enigma blacks out into darkness, drugs, dream sequence. 
Enigma stands from a dark abyss with neon blue lighting emitting from underneath him. He's wearing samurai armor with large and black horns. He looks down to see that he's standing on a small island. Around the island are the East Candies, peeps. Surrounding, they're lit in pink neon. Enigma manifests the katana from the darkness. He raises the blade of his head. He strikes, cutting through peeps. Peeps, parts, fly and shred. Peep, blood is loose through the air. Enigma cries out in the heat of this battle. Echoes of cello strikes seem to emit from him. The peeps are obliterated. His only battle is now from within. Down on his knees, he falls on his blade as the neon blue goes black. A red light emerges as Enigma, as Enigma is ripping apart its armor as though it were skin. Underneath, bloodied anatomy is revealed. His blood bursts, escaping his body, and so does more potent cello strikes as he screams. Oh, I'm so delighted you've accepted my invitation and that you'll be staying to see my studio and all the things I have in process. Mr. Osgon, wearing his clear plastic bag of headpiece, hovers over in the phone, will strap down to the back. Enigma is now wearing a ball gag. Mr. Osgon is noticeably dressed in surgical scrubs. I'm so happy to relieve you of the burden of carrying such a heavily decorated husk. Mr. Osgon looks over Enigma. Enigma is unconscious. I see to it that all my specimens are thoroughly cleansed. Off to the side is a tray of Mr. Osborne's instruments for flame. Next to several containers of rubbing alcohol and a sprayer, Mr. Osborne attaches a hose to the container. A little alcohol rub for the soul. The sprayer turns on. Enigma is blasted with an abrupt blast of rubbing alcohol. Enigma rolls and begins to wake. The hose turns off. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey, wonder boy. Enigma tries to grab a breath, adapting to the ball gag, and drenched in burning, rubbing alcohol. <sighs> Mr. Osgon sprays down Enigma again. You'll be my clean boy, Mr. Enigma. The sprayer shuts off. Enigma coughs, muffled <clears throat> the ball gag. Mr. Osgon grabs a chamois and begins to scrub down the enigma. Mr. Osgon starts gently across Enigma's chest and arms. All the while, Mr. Osgon looks into Enigma's dazed black eyes. Such a wonderful boy. Enigma can only look at Mr. Osgon and wonder what comes next. Your flesh, so wonderfully illustrated. Perhaps it is a drawn shield. Mr. Osgon nods his head in response. Oh, you don't say. So insightful. Mr. Osgon steps back only to drop out of Enigma's sight line. Enigma can feel Mr. Osgon scrubbing away below his waist. Enigma looks off in the distance. It is still night, and the great unknown is out there beyond the stage. Enigma looks down at Mr. Osgon cleaning away and humming. <laughs> Enigma can only offer up a muffled reply. Mr. Osgon looks up. Silly boy, am I scrubbing too hard? Enigma looks down and tries to reply. <laughs> Mr. Osgon stands. I think you are clean. Mr. Osgon reaches for something next to the sprayer and pulls back a scalpel. Uh-oh, Alan? Alan? I think you just froze. Mr. Osgon, are you there? Mr. Osgon, Mr. Osgon, are you there? It's a narrator. We are trying to reach you. I think he's trying to reconnect. 
There he is. Okay. Hello. Hello. We are Hello again. Hello. Okay. You okay, Alan? No. Mr. Osgum? Okay, we got um, we got audio. Where are we at, Samantha? Fifty-five? We're at the top of fifty-five. Starting okay. with Mr. Osgum. I want you to be present for this. Thank you. Oh, I want you to be present with this. Mr. Osgon. Mm. Did we lose Alan again? I think we did. I think we did. All right. Thank you, Heath. Heath plugs in the reel to reel and turns it on. Mr. Osgon turns to Enigma. I will record your responses to the stimuli and use it in this audioscape for my next installation. Enigma whimpers. <gasps> Mr. Ogwan gives pause. Track one, the Enigma with a ball. Mr. Ogwan takes the scalpel in hand. He presses the other hand against the Nicholas belly. On the black line of the puzzle piece, he sets the razor sharp blade. Then, with force, the scalpel cuts through the flesh with a pop. Enigma wrenches. Enigma wants to scream and can't. He tries to contort from the pain, still restrained. Mr. Osgon hits something hard and breaks off the end of the scalpel in Enigma's belly, a few centimeters from where he started. Mr. Osgon gasps. Bottom of 55, Mr. Osgon. What do you have there? Enigma starts to turn a sound. It's like laughter under the ball gap. Mr. Osgon is certainly bewildered by this response. You, you can't laugh. <laughs> Mr. Osgon nudges his pinky finger into Enigma's decision and tries to excavate what might be obstructing his cutting. Enigma continues to laugh in pain. <laughs> Mr. Osgon picks off the ball gag. Enigma reels from the gag's removal with a mild. Yeah. Then, with Enigma's uproarious laughter that echoes beyond the stage and into the night sky. <laughs> Mr. Osgon grabs another scalpel and gets into Enigma's face. Stop your nonsensical laughter! Fun will kill you! Enigma wriggles his tongue inside his mouth and from a modified pouch, spits a loogie at Mr. Osgon's <laughs> throat. Mr. Osgon grabs his throat and realizes there's a needle in it. <gasps> Mr. Osgon takes a stumble back. Whatever it is in that needle is fast acting. Ah, 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 it burns! Enigma clears his throat and responds to the triple yeah. of the saliva. <laughs> Hollow needles containing a sedative with capsicin from habanero peppers. Mr. Osgon is in agony. That's so mean! Enigma patiently waits for Mr. Osborn to tune. I have a tolerance for the sedative and habanero. Contains a kick. Better cocaine and Cuervo. Mr. Osborn is in during pain and getting sleepy. Oh, that's mean. Damn it.
Mr. Awesome falls to the floor and starts to do this, curling in a fetal position. Burn so good. I'm so sleepy, so sleepy. Mr. Alston is nearly asleep on the stage floor with Nigma watching Mr. Alston. Uh, I'll kill you soon. Mr. Alston's cutting tools remain laid out on the table as Mr. Alston succumbs to the sedative. Enigma, bleeding from his abdomen, takes pause. He looks around, pondering his face, and chuckles at his predicament. <gasps> If Houdini were here, he'd dislocate his thumbs. Exit nice stage. In the darkness emerges Grex before the stage. Grex sees an enigma still on the rack, and smiling like a child caught with his hand in a cookie jar. Hey! Grex eyes Mr. Osbaum sleep on the floor and gazes back to Enigma. Mr. Osgood, poor boy, he was tuckered out. Let's not wake him. Greg picks up Mr. Osgood and tries to wake him up. Mr. Osgood cannot be revived. He's stuck in a sleeping state until the sedative wears off. Greg looks to Enigma and shakes his head. No. Greg looks at Enigma sternly. Enigma is on the rack and bleeding from his stomach and looks back at Greg. Your boy has a fantastic addiction to Ambien there. Uh, not the best thing to take before cutting into my hide, making an Enigma throw rug. Greg is not amused. Greg pulls up the needle pulled from Mr. Osborne's neck. Mr. Osborne begins snoring loudly. You poisoned the master, my lovely. Enigma's blood drips down onto the stage floor. He is starting to ache as he responds. Uh, no, uh, no. He's asleep. Nothing life threatening. Mr. Osborne loosens a soft fart. <laughs> Crack makes a sour face. That really cuts attention, right? Uh, like, wow. Greg walks over and sticks his finger in Enigma's wound. Blood squirts. Enigma screams. Ah! Greg holds his finger in the wound as Enigma continues to moan. There is much blue in your skin. I wonder if you bruise, my lovely. Enigma reels in his restraints and coughs up a little bit of vomit. <coughs> Greg walks to the backstage through the curtain and Enigma spits out some more bile. <coughs> Greg walks back onto the stage with a blanket. Greg wraps his sleeping Mr. Osgon in the blanket, picking up the drugged body in his arms. There's Mr. Osgon off the stage. Enigma moans. Oh, you're a terrible host. Enigma spits as Greg vanishes into the darkness of the night. Enigma eyes his right hand restrained in its straps. Come on, Thumb. Leave. Enigma tries to focus on dislocating his thumb. By the power of Houdini! Enigma strains. He wriggles and contorts his thumb. The tendons rubbing along muscle and bone can be heard. I have the power! Clack. Enigma looks down at his left ankle. He has shackled Enigma's left ankle. Hello, sir. This is a distraction. Enigma looks ahead, his black eyes wide. Greg is almost to him, rushing at Enigma like a stampeding rhino. Bucko! Greg plows into Enigma, crashing through the rack that Enigma is still strapped to. Ah! 
she falls back for the curtain. Enigma is still struck to the front of the grass, but only falls 10 feet with the length of the chain that is shackled to Enigma. Grep lands hard on Enigma. Yuck! Grep, still on top of Enigma, lends some unsettling words to Blue Man's ears. You've assaulted my master, you naughty boy. Grex spit in Enigma's face. Oh. <laughs> yep, that's pleasant. Grex rises and steps off of Enigma. Grex goes out onto the stage where the tray of Sir Clinton comes are, grabs the scalpel. We'll see about getting that pesky blue skin suit off your worn carcass, my lovely. He remembers he dislocated his thumb and pulls out of his wrist for strain. His movement up to his elbow and grabs at Jackie's piece of a rack and tries at the next restraint. Grep turns. Enigma lays down the last piece of Jackie's piece as Grep walks back towards Enigma. Let us finish the master's work. Grip climbs the top Enigma and knees the Enigma's arms down. Don't you dare squirm. Grip takes the scalpel down to Enigma's incision at his abdomen. Grip draws the scalpel further. Enigma reels. Yeah! Enigma's agony gives way to a long, whiny creak. Grex stops. Enigma looks into Grex's face. Crash! The floor of the stage gives way, collapsing down into the mud below. This crash drags with Enigma, still landing under Grex, contorted, and with the scalpel pressed further into Enigma's stomach. Enigma is crushed. Pain is tremendous. Grex doesn't make it any better. Grex is slow to roll off. Enigma moans. Yeah! Both Grex and Enigma take pause and try to catch their breath. He overlooks the black area, looking down on Grex and Enigma. I suppose we should have looked at reinforcing the supports. Grick wobbles <laughs> and laughs. Grick looks up to he. He seems uneasy by this. Grick turns his attention to the broken, muddy enigma. What say you? Grick doesn't realize that in the crash through the floor, enigma has been freed up from more restraints. His right hand, free, takes in that jagged fragment of grass and drives it into Grex's foot. Blood gurgles. Grex lets out a roar of pain. Grex drops to his knees as Enigma tries to untether himself from the remaining straps. His leg is still suspended in the air from the same anchor to what is left of the stage. Top of 63, Tori, you want to take over? Sure. Grek dives at Enigma, seeing that he is now mostly free from the fractured rack. Enigma slaps Grek as Enigma tries to shuffle out of the way. Enigma can only go so with his chained leg. Grek is surprised by the slap, but is alert in the darkness and mud. Enigma undoes a final strap. Heath, still above, Enigma and Grek, grabs at Enigma's chain. He begins pulling Enigma, trying to suspend Enigma and making it easier for Grek to get at the blue puzzle man. Enigma is distracted. Grek lunges once more at Enigma. The two tangle. Enigma tries to stand and get away. Grek is so close, he is punching Enigma repeatedly and constricting him at the same time. Enigma is kicking with his one free leg. He connects with Grek's wounded foot. Grek reels and loses his grip. Enigma turns and bites down on Grek's ear. Grek screams. Ah! Grek wrenches. Flesh ripping is heard. Grek stops. He doesn't want to move for fear of making the situation worse. He eyes slightly back. Enigma has Grek's ear in his mouth with bleeding flesh stretched out. My ear! Enigma replies with a mouthful. Ah! 
Enigma is pulled on the chain. Enigma rips the ear from Grek's head. Uh oh. Heath realizes he probably shouldn't have tried to help. Enigma uses the momentum to climb out of the collapsed hole and onto the stage. Grek reels and screams in bloody pain. <laughs> Heath is stunned. Uh, Grek? Enigma rolls exhausted on the stage. Heath looks over to Enigma. You know, you still have a scalpel in your stomach. What? Enigma looks down at his stomach. Fucking A. The whole time? I, I didn't even notice. Heath produces an axe. You, sir, are one tough Oreo. Now, the rest of the body hurts too much to notice. You should pull that out. Enigma eyes some of his props. The katana catches his eye. He just needs to get at it. Thanks for your concern. I just bleed out too fast. Think about the infection. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Heath comes at Enigma with an ax. Enigma painfully rolls to his katana. Heath turns and comes at Enigma again with the, with the ax. Enigma has the katana in his hand. Heath follows through with the ax. Enigma catches the ax at the hilt and connects his katana into Heath's side. Blood spurts. Slice bread. Swiss cheese. Enigma looks at his hand holding the ax. Heath is stabbing Enigma's hand repeatedly with a nail. Blood and flesh spatter. Mother. The chain is yanked hard. Enigma is pulled back into, collapse, into the collapsed pit as Grek climbs out. Enigma still has his katana in hand, but is crumpled on the ground. Oh. Exterior, night, stage. Grek turns to Heath. Heath is still holding the axe. Grek, earless, is trying to contain his rage. You are at fault. I am so quiet. Grek looks to some cloth at the curtain. Bandage me. Heath walks to the curtain and begins to cut. No, the master would not like that. Heath looks around and finds some clean cloth. He begins cutting the cloth into strips. Heath walks back up to Grek and is about to start wrapping his head. Clean the wound. With? Your flask. Heath pulls out his flask and opens it. Yes, well, his katana is a dull blade, since he uses it to swallow. Top of 66, this is going to sting. Oh, sorry. This is going to sting. Heath begins dousing the bloodied ear hole. Oh, ah! Heath takes some cloth and douses it. I am going to swab the wound. Grek inhales. Heath begins swabbing the wound to consider to continue the cleaning. Heath finishes. All finished. Grek reaches up to touch the bandages. Heath stops him. You don't want to touch him. Leave it till we can get you back to the compound. Grek turns to Heath. Now, clean your wound. My wound? Yes, you took a katana in your side. Heath turns to reveal the cut. Yes, well, his katana is a dull blade. He uses it to swallow. Good to know. Heath pulls up his bloody shirt and jacket. It feels right, up, yeah, right above the hip. Grek prods his fingers along the wound. Hey, just clean it. Grek grabs Heath's arm hard. I am. A large man forces his hand into Heath's wound and grips the hip bone. He oh. screams an unnatural scream. <laughs> Breck lets go of Heath's arm and grabs for the bottom of Heath's rib cage. With the other hand in place around Heath's hip bone, the large man begins to slowly pull Heath apart. <laughs> The sound of slow, crunching bone and tendons echo in Grek's one ear. 
he sees red. Heath is in an imaginable anguish. Muscle and flesh tear. Blood bursts from small pockets onto Greg and what is left of the stage floor. <laughs> the tension and strain to pull a man apart is unfathomable, but Grek in his unholy fury has reached those depths as he takes it out on the man responsible for losing his ear. Heath's body goes limp as he blacks out from the pain. The tearing, crunching, and spurting of blood continues. Heath's body seems almost like a broken wishbone dangling from one last fiber. Grek reaches a large crunch with a last large gurgle of blood. Grek exhales and relaxes with pause. If, Grek I have, if I have lines on this page, I don't see them. You, uh, it looks yeah. like you, 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 you do midway down. Yeah, on this page. Okay. Uh, you have lines on page 69. Okay. As Grek relaxes, so does Heath's lifeless body. With exclamation, the intestines slip out of a torn cavity, hitting the broken stage floor. Grek is exhausted. Grek takes a seat. Exterior, night, stage. From the darkness, applause. Grek peers into the collapsed stage void. The applause increases. Grek is about to stand. A bingo board with pieces is produced from the darkness. Way to go, Grek. You are a remarkable HR director. Grek eyes the bingo board. You deserve a bingo break. Grek seems amused, even curious. Where is this going? Grek picks up the board and several of the pieces. Uh, B3. Grek has B3. He places a piece on the board. What you doing in the dark, lovely? Crack turns back to the void. Oh, you wouldn't be interesting. Try me. This blue hoof fella is merely traversing onto another plane. I seem to still be anchored here. Enigma shakes the chain still anchored to the stage floor from the darkness. Grek catches it. He does not have O44 on his board. This plane is all you know. Oh, I got that ripped away. O44. Uh, I've been on the road for 25 years. It's more like Groundhog's Day. It's a continuous loop. I-15. Greg looks at the board. No I-15. Do you think you'll escape here with your life? Ah! No! B4. Grek looks at his board. He has B4 and places a piece on the board. Can I ask you something? Shoot. How do you think Mr. Osgon will react when he sees Heath is dead? Lovely. Heath is one in many. Huh? Lovely. Grek is legion as well. Oh. Breck awaits the next number. My skin is the only home I know. From the darkness, Greg hears a chainsaw fire. And my home leaves with me. A chainsaw cuts through the stage floor around where Enigma's chain is anchored. Greg's yes. eyes widen as he stands to the ready. The chain is free. It is pulled back into the dark. Enigma's black eyes gleam in the darkness. Grek doesn't like this. It's time to self-destruct. Grek must rage. Grek throws something into the darkness. It lands with a thud, unknown if it hit Enigma at all. Grek grabs an ax and starts chopping away at the floor. The chainsaw still roars in the darkness. With another swing of the ax, Grek is open for an attack. Enigma can see it and comes at Grek, trying to connect the berserker's flesh with the teeth of the chainsaw. The chain of the saw hits flesh, blood. Grek rocks back and follows through with the other hand, swinging down with the ax at the chainsaw. It connects, sparks. Enigma tries to catch himself. Grek jumps down into the darkness, swinging his ax. 
Enigma evades him. As the axe connects to the earth, Enigma meets the handle with the chainsaw. Grek connects a back fist to Enigma. Enigma falls back and loses the chainsaw. Grek can now get an eyeful of what Enigma has been up to in the darkness. It is clear that Enigma had time to bandage himself and collect his props to be used as weapons. You've been busy down here. Enigma spits blood. Grek comes at Enigma with the axe. Enigma kicks Gre at Grek's axe hand. The axe is still in hand, but propels Grek's momentum to rotate around with a punch that catches Enigma in the face. Enigma goes flying to the perimeter. Punch after punch is laid into Enigma as he is pinned between the supports and destroyed flooring. Hit. He is losing this fast and needs to get out and away. He can't survive against Grek like this. The axe comes again. Enigma darts into Grek, too close so the axe doesn't matter. Enigma tries for Grek's ear, connecting his thumb into Grek's meaty hole. Oh. Grek reels, drops the axe. You got an earful. Enigma picks up the axe and throws it at Grek. Grek catches the axe with one hand. The other hand is holding his bloodied ear hole. Grek throws it back. Enigma rolls out of the way into his chainsaw. Enigma gets it going again and swings at Grek. Grek backs off. Enigma swings again and connects with Grek's abdomen. Enigma pulls back. Grek slumps over. Enigma eyes the supports of the stage and green room. Let's kick this party up a notch, shall we? Enigma starts sawing away at supports and what remains of the stage. Yeah. Enigma turns only to see Grek jump at him. The chainsaw falls to one side as the two collapse into the mud. Grek grips Enigma's arm and holds his face down in the mud. Enigma tries to reach for anything that he can use against Grek. Grek produces a knife from his boot. Still holding Enigma down, Grek starts cutting into Enigma's skin, attempting to skin him. Cut along the line. Ow! Fuck! Enigma reaches into the darkness with mud and mud. He grips something. Enigma swings the object wildly back at Grek. It is his katana. This startles Grek and eases his pressure. That allows Enigma to strike again. Grek stands back and out of reach. Enigma stands, katana in one hand. The other is shredded, dripping blood. Enigma is caked in mud. Grek has his knife in hand, but he is eyeing the chainsaw that idles in the mud. Enigma slinks back into the shadows. His eyes gleam at the chainsaw too. Grek dives for the chainsaw. Mud splatters. Grek's hand is met with the katana. <laughs> Enigma recoils and unleashes the katana again, striking at Grek's leg. It does matter. Grek rolls and clenches the chainsaw. The idle hum is present in the shadow as Grek limps to his feet. Enigma is sure to lose his fight. He remains in the shadow. Grek is noticeably more reckless and clumsy. Tag, you're it! Enigma completely fades into the shadows. Grek comes at Enigma like a chainsaw-wielding wrecking ball. A cacophony of splinters and debris comes flying through the dark. A flash of the katana catches some light haphazardly. The chainsaw roars. Grek thrashes. Enigma evades Grek and stays in the dark a step ahead. Grek rages. Floor collapses in more segments. Enigma can see that this place is coming down. The chainsaw cuts through fabric and wooden boards. Debris sputters about as Grek screams, interested in his own berserker rage, not paying attention to the fact he is causing the stage, the remnants, to collapse. The sound of the stage, the framework, creak. Everything seems alive and willing to give way. Where are you, my lovely? Where are you, Enigma? In the dark, Enigma can see his opening. He takes it. His katana strikes from the shadows, striking one, two at Grek's eyes. Black. Grek is stunned. He is blind and boiling over with fury. Blood from his stabbed eyes dribble into his mouth. He lets loose a horrifying scream. Black. Blind. 
Grek rushes at anything that he can hear over the chainsaw. He still wields. Enigma maintains a clear distance. This is his chance to slip away. Grek continues sawing, sawing away, swinging the chainsaw in a wild and menacing way as though he has no help. Enigma! Enigma remains silent. He is up on the stage now, slowly, quietly moving away from Grek. Oh, but that damn chain still attached to Enigma's ankle. It makes a clanging sound. Grek hears it. Enigma. Grek comes at Enigma, swinging the saw wildly. Grek cannot see where he is going and falls into some jagged lumber, puncturing his abdomen. Blood spurts from the wound and then the mouth. Enigma is nearing the edge of what is left of the stage, in the darkness of the open night sky. He looks back, watching as Grek bleeds out and rages on, attacking the stage structure with the chainsaw. Enigma, I'll kill you! I'll fucking kill you! Enigma is careful not to make any more noise. He holds his shredded arm. All he can do is watch as Grek ransacks the structure. Debris flies. The foundation creaks and quakes. Grek is near death, bleeding out the way he is. He seems unaware that the stage is about to collapse in on him. Enigma hears a slow building creak, which gives way to a loud, earth-shattering collapse. Enigma hops off the stage and into the mud. Huh? Grek is still heard raging. Part of the structure collapses. Grek goes silent. The chainsaw is heard hitting the ground. Enigma is in the mud, holding his katana as he takes in the collapsed structure. Enigma turns and starts heading back to the van. Exterior dawn, open field near a ravine. Enigma seems to be lost as the sun rises. He is bloodied and caked in dry mud. In the distance, he can hear the whining of a chihuahua. Then he hears several. Enigma stops and turns to see what it is. There's movement off in the distance, and it is not little dogs. The figures seem human, backlit by the early morning sun. Enigma hurries along, cursing under his heavy breathing. The figures are gaining on Enigma. Enigma zips down a ravine, through the mud and water. Enigma falls. The katana falls out of his hand. He's soaked and climbs out of the mess. Enigma looks around for his katana. He doesn't see it. He begins searching in the murky water. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Enigma finds it in the murky, muddy mess. He stands holding it up. Excalibur! The figures catch up several sets of black and red mudded figures, crash into Enigma. His katana oh. flies out of his hand. Enigma kicks and bites and punches at this mass of figures kaleidoscoping over each other. Enigma grapples as they all fall over each other. They fall over back into the water. Enigma continues to try and fight, only to have them overpower him and hold him down in the water. He contorts, but his face is up. For fuck's sakes, fellas! Enigma's face is accidentally dunked. He comes back up and spits out the nasty water. Pukui! One of the muddied figures comes up from over Enigma's head with a scalpel. Enigma eyes the scalpel, but cannot escape. Wait, 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 wait! Blade connects to a black line on his head. An incision is made, and the cutting starts. Oh, no ice cream for you! Blood collects and trickles down into Enigma's face. Exterior dawn, ravine. Mr. Osgon makes his way over the creek, wearing a different plastic mask with a yellow tint. A chair is brought out for him by a muddy figure. Mr. Osgon watches as Enigma is down in the water, getting, out, getting back up. He sits down in his chair. The muddy figure stands and rolls a cigarette. Enigma screams in the background. Ah! Muddied figure places the cigarette in Mr. Osgon's mouth and lights it. Osgon takes a long drag as Enigma continues to scream in pain. Fuck! Mr. Osgon calls out. What? Down in the ravine, the muddied figure cutting pauses. A muddy figure's fingers are now under Enigma's skin. He is soaked in his own blood in unimaginable pain. His eyes go to where Osgon is yelling from. I still have your dog. The muddy figure with Mr. Osgon wheels out Darla's cauterized parts 
displayed as a marionette, the parts seem more bleached and lifeless, dangling on cables. What do you think? She seems to have more life in her than last you saw her, don't you think? Enigma looks up and sees hints of Darla's display in the early morning sun. Enigma sees and feels despair. He is ready to succumb. I will have your skin. I have a, a new exhibition to prepare for my next- A gunshot is fired out. Mr. Osborn collapses out of his chair. A second gunshot goes out. The muddied figure Ooh. to Mr. Osgon goes down. Enigma and the muddied figures in the ravine look up, trying to decipher what is happening. Mr. Osgon is down in the dirt, whimpering. Ow, ow, ow. Exterior dawn, distant hilltop. The feet of some familiar shit kickers and a set of bandaged legs under a nice dress land up top a hill. After a dusty climb, it is Cowhan Jane and Fabulous Maud. Cowhan Jane's rifle is smoking. This is the thick pot of old coffee we come upon, Maud. Cowhan Jane takes aim down at the ravine. He takes another shot. Exterior Dawn Ravine. A muddy figure takes a bullet and falls face first into the water. The others scatter like frightened birds. Enigma drops back into the water. Blood and mud washes away as he surfaces. He climbs to the bank, holding his head and trying to apply pressure. The dead, muddied figure floats by. Enigma kicks it, then angrily kicks it in frustration. Fuck off, floater! You fucking fuck! Steers oh. down ravine. Oh. Ah. Drogon tries to get to his feet. That was my favorite leg. Mr. Osgon gets to his feet, applying as much weight to his good leg as he can. He looks down at the bloodied entry wound on his right shin. Mr. Osgon hears Darla's doll parts hit the ground. He turns and is confronted by Cowhand Jane, putting his knife away and has his rifle at the ready. A happy morning to you, Mr. Osgon. Cowhand. Now Han Jane points his rifle at Mr. Osgon. Mr. Osgon puts up his hands slowly. You know you are trespassing. You made one of my friends and attempted to kill another friend. Cowhand? Don't make me shoot your tongue out. That'd be the embodiment of polarity. Mr. Osgon doesn't know how to respond. You take that here, this canvas. Place all of Dollar's parts in it. And carry them down with you. Get! Mr. Osgon motions at his leg. But my leg. My leg. Not your leg. Want me to shoot the other one? Make a matching set? No, no, no. That's right. But, yes, no. Now hurry up with Dollar. We don't have all cotton picking days, Ziploc. Mr. Osgon gets the canvas and starts at putting Darla's parts in it. Exterior early morning ravine. Fabulous Maud is sitting on a rock, sewing up Enigma's head. His blood and mud have rubbed off on her dress. Nothing to be done about that. Enigma is sipping on water and nibbling on an apple while wrapped in a blanket. Even under all the tattoos, he looks pale. Ouch. Fabulous Maud pops another suture through Enigma's skin. Ouch. Mr. Osgon comes down the ravine slowly in much pain and carrying a canvas with Darla's remains. Cowhand Jane follows with a rifle on Osgon. Maud and Enigma look up. Maud is unmoved. Enigma is startled by the near proximity of his tormentor. Mr. Osgon is exhausted. Osgon, Enigma. Now Han Jane pops Mr. Osgon in the back of his head with the butt of the rifle to wisen the bag tormentor up. Oh. Maud finishes with Enigma and dabs his head with a clean rag. 
You don't get to talk to Enigma. Cowhand Jane walks around in front of Mr. Osgon. Maud reaches for something. Enigma is too tired to react. Rest Darla on the ground. Mr. Osgon rests Darla's remains on the earth and raises his hands. The keys for Enigma shackles. Mr. Osgon digs a hand slowly into his pocket and pulls out a chain of keys. Throw it to Maud. Mr. Yeah. Osgon throws the keys to Maud. Maud catches them and gets to work unlocking the shackle. Exterior early morning ravine. Enigma's shackle and chain is now wrapped around the neck of Mr. Osgon. Cowhand Jane gives one end to Enigma. Enigma has a blanket tied around him. He's all stitched and bandaged. He chomps on another apple while holding his katana. Enigma talks to Cowhand Jane while watching Mr. Osgon. What's the plan, Cowhand? Walk back to the gas station, get you medical help, turn bucket over to the authorities. Mr. Osgon, holding the canvas filled with Darla's remains, responds in ill fashion. I have a name. Shut the fuck up, fucko. Cowhand Jane slaps Mr. Osgon's ass to get him moving. You heard Enigma, get moving, fucko. Maud lights some fireworks and throws them at Mr. Osgon's feet. Mr. Osgon painfully jumps around as he gets off to a limping stride. Second star to the right and straight on till morning. More till we hit the place, Cowhand. Enigma, Cowhand Jane, and fabulous Maud walk with Mr. Osgon, who is defeated led by a chain around his neck and carrying the canvas with Darla's remains. As they walk, Enigma becomes more upbeat. Mr. Osgon becomes more downbeat and sluggish in his defeated rhythm. Marching music kicks in. Enigma turns his face to the sun. Enigma reflects that he survived the deadly strange ordeal and the loss of his partner. Enigma tugs at Mr. Osgon. Fabulous Maud pulls out her ping pong paddle. In the blink of an eye, Maud turns on the unsuspecting Mr. Osgon, following through with the paddle in hand, smashing Osgon's skull. Blood splatters on the inside of Osgon's mask as he goes down. Enigma and Cowhand Jane don't notice what just happened to Mr. Osgon. Just before he hits the ground, cut to black. Then you hear Enigma and Cowhand Jane. Damn it, Maud! Damn it, Maud! Damn it, Maud. Fee, what's that? Roll and the credits. Yeah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> well, despite technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thanks, guys. Thanks for, for coming on and, and doing that. That was a lot of fun. It was so much fun. Yeah, uh, technical difficulties and all. Um, unfortunately, Enigma wasn't able to to see it out with us, but uh, hopefully we can uh, get them for the real thing. Definitely. So, yeah. What's the real thing? Uh, hopefully, <laughs> uh, hopefully a feature film adaptation at some at some point soon. Mm. We'll we'll see. Hopefully, uh, we mm -hmm. can uh, you know we can kind of pull uh, the horror community in, in Denver and a lot of talent and resources and see if we can knock this out. Yeah. You know, uh, it's going to be tough for you to find a manlier man than me. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I, I am quite emasculated right now. <laughs> cool. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. What do you, what do you think guys? Uh, yeah. How do you feel? That was super fun. Yeah. 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 I love, That's I love fun. the whole, um, you know, where like an Enigma's fighting for his life. And I love how it's like, not just Mr. Osgon, he's fighting off. It's like Keith and Grap. I loved how <laughs> Grap turned on Keith. That was awesome. That was really great. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Grap's a, a pretty awesome bastard, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really <laughs> Who's the scary dude? Who's the scariest? So. Yeah, I, I kind of, uh, you know, in, envision some, some type of, uh, yeah, Leatherface, if he could articulate and didn't have cool masks. Yeah. And you roar like the Hulk. Yeah, right, right. Especially if you're able to, you know, pull somebody apart. That's pretty impressive. 
Um, but uh, I, I think the the nice thing too is is uh, you know it brings to life uh, a lot more uh, edits I need to do, and I, I think I need to uh, you know talk to you know probably like like Alan and uh, a few others and get some some notes um, as well to kind of beef things up because yeah you know, reading it out out loud when you hear things out loud it's like oh yeah this doesn't flow this doesn't work. Um, or, or this works pretty well, and, and this sounds really good when somebody else says it. Yeah, you know, like like Bobby and and yeah. Well, all four of you, it, it sounds absolutely so much fun when when I hear you guys, you know, kind of uh, you know spew out those words. So you know, Bobby, oh my God, expert, just awesome delivery. Uh, I, I get pretty startled when I hear you. <laughs> so, oh, and then you know, Alan. I, I think you guys can can make some great supervillains together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, but hopefully, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Definitely miss miss Enigma. Um, I think this highlights that maybe Streamyard, as awesome of a br live broadcast platform it is, it's just not set up to to handle multiple people doing scripts. So. Maybe Zoom's a little bit better. Uh, you got a little. Oh, I, I got. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah. Uh, God, it was pretty awesome. Well, guys, if if there's yeah, not anymore. I, oh, go ahead. I just put up my uh, phone number and my uh, uh, email. Okay. Everybody, Everybody, please save that. Don't, don't don't send it out right now. You know, um, we're broadcasting, so don't don't share it on, on you know online. Oh, it's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. Anybody can call me. I don't care. Any strange? <laughs> yeah, I, I have the best yeah, conversations. Let's fucking cry. <laughs> yeah, I have a I have the best <laughs> conversations with strangers. You know. Oh, good. <laughs> Literally. Cool. So this is uh, uh, this will be on Facebook. We'll have a version of this on on YouTube a little bit later. But you know, feel free to to share it. Uh, right now, we've got a live version. We probably have, excuse me, comments. Oh yeah, we've got quite a few comments. Oh yeah, yeah Sharon's been pretty uh, pretty supportive. She she loves uh, the line shit kicker boots, and. Uh, uh, Tori, you, I think you've got uh, a fan with uh, somebody named Melanie. Okay. Or Melody. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jason says hello. Uh, way better than cats. <laughs> well, <laughs> thanks, Jason. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, uh, thanks, guys. Uh, I won't keep you any longer. You guys. Uh, have a good night, and uh, let's uh, let's reconnect soon. All right, homie. Thank you very much. See you later, right. everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye, Thank guys. you. Ciao. Thank you. Thanks.